everybody, it's the Trout, and welcome to another episode of the Trout Show Podcast. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today I interview a multi-talented artist who is a actress, singer, songwriter, guitar player. She's performed on stage, screen, and film. Her name is Anna Mitzer. Now what's so unique about Anna is the fact that she's multi-talented, but also she just released a cover version of that great Metallica song, Inner Sandman. And I wanted everybody to hear that song along with her story about where she is now in her musical career and where she's going. And to give you a little background, when she did this song, she brought in a wonderfully talented producer, Janet Robbins, who just won a Grammy with her performance with the String Revolution Band. So sit back, grab yourself an adult beverage, and get ready for this episode of The Trout Show starring Anna Mitzer. That's next on The Trout Show Podcast. Are you concerned about your financial health? Then why don't you count on an expert that has years of experience of helping people just like you reach their financial possibilities? That's David Smith with Edward Jones at 469-372-1587. David has years of experience of helping people just like you. So reach out to him today, 469-372-1587. David Smith with Edward Jones. You started out, you grew up, did you grow up in California? Is that where you're born? Yes. Okay. And what Los part Angeles. are you in or where were you born? Or what area? LA, born, okay. born and raised in LA. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. The West side. Did you want to always be an actress or a singer or both? Both, both. Okay. Um, I definitely, um, yeah, I on both wanted to be an actress my whole life. Um, but I also come from a very musical background and have been singing and playing music my whole life as well. Um, I grew up very, uh, my parents really support the arts and support theater and mm -hmm. they was very lucky to have them really support that passion for me and also to grow up around a lot of that culturally we would go to new york all the time and see broadway shows and <laughs> movies and listen to great music i mean the memories of listening to the beatles and the car with my dad and you know being exposed to all of that um and i started playing piano from a young age and um voice lessons and all of that for for a long time so i i ended up like in my education and school, like I, I got a degree in acting um, mm. in musical theater, actually. So the combination of the music and the, oh, yeah. and the acting. Well, may I um, ask what school you went to? Yeah, of course, Syracuse. I went to okay. Syracuse and got my BFA there. And uh, um, so yeah, and you, I actually- When you were growing up, all right, so as mm -hmm. you're getting this degree, and as I ask, ask people in college, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm-hmm. Did you envision yourself standing on the Broadway stage, singing some, belting out some great tune to some La Miserable or something like that? <laughs> Absolutely. Or Hamilton yeah. going, I can see myself. I'm that one right there. Did you say kind of what you envisioned? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it started, um, and I don't know if this was also growing up in L.A., but I have a lot of 
dreams and desires around film acting and sure. um, having a series, all, all of that kind of stuff. And I actually felt less, as much as I loved singing, I felt less comfortable in the musical theater genre, which is part of why I chose to get my degree in musical theater so that I could cultivate it and feel like mm -hmm. this is something I also want to do. Let me master this as well and and like have it be more in my in my toolbox comfort zone um and since then i've done a lot of work in theater just the way that things have unfolded i've happened to do a lot of a lot of musical theater a lot of stage um performing and um and it's been so great getting to blend um my musical background now into writing my own music and mm -hmm. working on producing my own music with Janet. Um, there's, it's been very freeing and like a, a sense of, a new sense of like creative autonomy, I think, especially being in an, indus in an industry where I'm auditioning for things, you know, yeah, and so other people are. always waiting for next job. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, oh, I can. Job? What <laughs> I okay, this gig's over, where are we going like that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, acting's like music. You're only, you know, you got to wait for your night. You, we got booked up for three months. Okay. What are we doing after that? Mm -hmm. but, totally. but your music though, as you well know, singing in that type of genre is completely different than singing inner Sandman. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when I watched my wife and I've been doing this for years, American Idol, and mm -hmm. they, the people said, oh, I was on Broadway. We know exactly how they're going to start singing. Because mm. so you're so used to projecting and trying to, oh, you know, that stuff. That's yeah. part of the gig. And it's hard for people, I think, a lot of times to come away from that. Because, mm. you know, you've had the exposure to do both. And, and apparently, from what I hear, you've done a good job on both sides. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but if you had your druthers, if you could wave a wand and go, I could do this. Are you into film or you would you rather what's what's your what would be your best thing right now if you said to yourself i could do this for the rest of my life and they pay me money to do it what would you do oh all of it that's the true answer like yeah. i you know well there's nothing stopping you from doing all of it yeah being being on set shooting a a a, a film or a series that is exciting and lights me up and is with amazing collaborators surrounding me and i also see that happening like in uh beautiful landscapes and environments and travel mm -hmm. being a part of that um but then you know having a hiatus from the show or wrapping the movie and going and doing You're a done. show on broadway yeah. and um getting to perform on stage and uh and then getting to also share my original music with people too. And I really do um, something that I have come to own more in my journey. And as I've gotten older is, is that it, it gets to be all of it. It gets to be, um, I get to sort of claim all of those things. Well, and they're all so connected and, you know. Yeah. If you can be good in all of them, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I mean, you know, because people are usually pigeonhole people into what they are. Right. And um, if you can, I mean, there's some advantages to all those things that you want to do. There's also some mm -hmm. huge disadvantages to it. So what's yeah. some of the stuff you've done on film? Um, I've, well, <laughs> I, I've done a, I did a, a musical film, um, <laughs> funny enough. Um, I've had a couple, you know, smaller roles on some network shows and, right. um, I did a, a recurring part on a series that was on Amazon a, a few years ago. And, um, as I said, like what's been more percolating just as it has unfolded has been stage things. Yeah. Um, I toured for a year with the the first national Broadway tour of The Sound of Music. Um, yeah. I have done a handful, you know, regional musicals and uh, world premieres and readings of new works. Um, and I think to your point earlier, 
part of what created an opening for my music was some of the the lulls or the just there's like an ebb and flow especially if yeah you're a multi-hyphenate or you're in multiple different ways of uh a business or expressing so as things were quieter or more slowed down because of pandemic you know um other things like that which is when i started um writing again uh then my energy sort of moved more into the create the music creating part and and just i don't know being riding that wave a bit of like where is the space um with each of these things and then where do Mm -hmm. i get to create the space so that i'm still creating and it was mixed or mixed that in in the uk you sent it to an engineer or i i'm I'm a person that looks at all the details yeah yeah oh i i love that i love the details i love um talking about and bragging on the amazing people that work on (laughs) work on my on my tracks um yes so matthew hyde mix and mastered um all all the songs that i've put out so far and i got connected with him through Janet Robin. Uh, he has, yeah, he's, he's worked on a bunch of string revolution stuff, which is her mm-hmm. band of course. And, um, when we were working on my first single haunted, the time came for the, the mixing and the mastering. And Janet's like, I have someone who's really good and he's busy. He's really busy. He works nonstop. And, but let's see if he would be willing to, Right. to work on your song and um <clears throat> and then that started that relationship and so it's a lot you of are. you know back and forth over email and maybe a zoom call here and there to talk about the as we go through the process of it um the mixing process but yeah he's he's fantastic and he actually funny enough has a background in in working on metal like working with rock and oh and metal tracks. So he kind of understands um, that. <laughs> or you can yeah, give you even, a little, do your compression or whatever you want to do to make it sound metal, but not lose you in the mix, so to speak. Right. Right. Do exactly. you get much involved in that? Do you give your opinion on it? Do you kind of say what you kind of what what you hear? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. I'm I'm, I'm very involved. <laughs> um, I, I, and I, I understand that. Some people are. Some of them go. I want to go in the studio and record. I don't want to know all that stuff. Mm. You know, they might probably want to yeah. come back in when they start mixing it. Obviously, everybody has their own hand in that. Sure. But, so you're one of those people that says, I want to be involved. It's my stuff. And you probably, yeah. like we all do, if you're a writer, you hear it up here mm-hmm. and then try to convey it to the people in the room. Yeah. Yeah. I, I co-produce all of my stuff. Janet and I produce it together. She engineers it in the studio, but we are... I'm pretty much there with her unless there's like, you know, a little, a cleanup thing that she has to do that I don't need to be there for. Like I'm there every session. Um, and yeah. And she's so, I love collaborating with her. She really, um, there's just this mutual respect and like space for me to, and safety, you know, for me Mm -hmm. to be able to share my oh, yeah. my thoughts and opinions yeah. and when i was doing the the first track we were doing um producer writer artist of my own original stuff i really appreciated how much space she gave me to be like yeah you are you are a producer on this too and this is your song and i'm going to support it and i'm going to give my opinion and we're going to work together so um Anyway, I were that way with with Matt as well in the in the post um, process too, which is great. I really appreciate. I really appreciate. The it. one thing, the thread between everything is your creative. You may yeah. be reading notes from a page when you have to do Broadway, but you're still creating. You're still putting mm-hmm. yourself in it. Mm-hmm. And and um, yeah, you have to do certain things that they, the director tells you to do, but you're still creating. And at mm-hmm. the end of the day, as, writing a song and being it done, it still amazes me how cool it is when you get fished. When you release Inner Sandman, which you just did, what do you want? How do you go out and support something like that? 
I mean, you're not you're not in a band, so to speak. You're not going to go out and get a gig and go, "Hey, I'm going to come in with my band doing Inner Sandman." What do you hope happens to it? Yeah, I. That's a great question. Uh, I mean, I I hope that really what I and I, I feel like this is a thing with all artists, I would imagine to an extent. But I really, I just want people to hear it and and enjoy it and so much of this track is is in the production like there's a lot of the the magic and the specific the vibe and the like feeling that i want to evoke from it that is within the production of this recording um and I've, you know, been thinking about how I would do it live because I don't want to lose any of that. And I know there's also a new, there's newness and other things that can come from um, performing it live, which is on on the horizon, eventually for sure. For um, sure. I'm I'm also in pre production right now for the music video for it. Part of I was going to ask you if you were going to um, make a video for it. Yeah, I've I've made a video for all of the songs I've released so far to go with it. That's part of, for me, the all encompassing expression of of these pieces. And I I see them, I, I hear them, I feel them in a way of like, what is what is the tone? What is the feeling I want to evoke? And then I also the visual aspect of it, um, adding to the full the full picture of it. So I'm um, in process of that right now. And I've produced and been very involved in creative directing, you know, my last couple videos, and I'm thinking about direct, like just taking the reins and directing. Well, and, and the other part about it is too, that people always that are not in the business, so to speak, mm -hmm. that's what it is. You're in a business mm. and, yeah. and you know, People love you, but if you're not making money for somebody, they're not, you, you're not going to be in it long. So it takes right. a lot of effort to keep going to provide it. Now. I mean, I would think one of the great things for you guys, especially you, is if that guy that sings that song in her Sandman would actually say something to you about it, but that he liked it. Mm. And I mean, maybe on Instagram or YouTube, yeah. be a little hat filled thing. Pretty cool. Thanks very much. Yeah. Oh, I would love for them to hear it. I that's that is that is one of the the goals or the the big desires around it is um is for them to to hear it because I really and I know Janet talked about this when she came on and was speaking with you about the cover her cover that just won a Grammy. Oh yeah. Um honoring the original song, like keeping the soul of the song but then bringing our unique voice to it are you our take our spin but without losing the the core of the song which is it's a freaking amazing song the song itself is is so good and the production of it is so cool um and it's just about a different a different a unique channel of it which is coming from me versus coming from them that all wrote it and and created it originally so i would love i would love for them to hear it and and as i said before you know to be honest i um the business side of the music industry and mm -hmm. all of that that is um janet has been super encouraging and, and supportive of like yeah this is it is a business and this is part of how the music gets heard um and when i started the my whole songwriting producing music producing venture like mm -hmm. it was totally for me it was totally for my own creativity right. fulfillment and um yep. to have an outlet of something that felt like you know um it started off with janet being like when are you going to start writing songs and me being like i don't I'm I'm not good enough with the mic. I'm not good enough on guitar yet. I don't, you know, whatever stories that were there with that. And she's like, "Yes, you are. Just start playing every day." And I, for months, for like five minutes a day, I picked up my guitar and I just played 
anything with, you know, just, just jammed with myself and, right. yep. um, which I hadn't really done before. And it was something that like scared me and felt like, oh, this is out of reach. And, and then even just doing that, like haunted came from that, um, came from one of those days where I was like, oh, I like this. I'm just going to record it so that I don't forget it. What well, do you then, think about that song? And when yeah. I watch it, that is a very personal song. Not, <laughs> not so much, I mean, from the song itself, but when I start watching it and I see you sitting there playing guitar and that's it at the beginning and there's not a lot added to it, that's mm -hmm. a pretty bare bones thing. There's something so freeing in, in doing in creating and allowing to come through what is true to you yep. and letting it be okay, letting it, it be more than okay. If the, and to know that it's not going to be for everyone, but if it is true to me and then trusting that the people who it will move or impact or that will, will resonate with yep. that they will hear it, that, that it's for them too. And it's okay that it's not for everyone. And, um, and yeah, like I, a lot of times have no idea what, <laughs> what, what is coming out, like what I'm playing. I'm like, I don't know, actually, and the, the freedom in that of, you know, coming from a background where I did put a lot of pressure on myself to around like theory and oh, yeah. technique and stuff. And then being like, I don't know what chord I'm playing right now. I just made it up. And yep. <laughs> like, that's, it's, it's very freeing. As a piano player, see, that's the other thing you have going for you. Mm -hmm. It's so linear, you know, mm -hmm. and you can go all this stuff like flat seventh and all that stuff. Guitar players don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like we're playing in a flat. What the heck is that? You know, if it's not in a major key, you forget it, you know. So I, I, I think the ability to do that helps you a lot mm -hmm. because now you've got a, you've got, it's almost like your, your brain is fighting with itself. Okay. I'm supposed yeah. to do this. Yeah, but I really want to do this. And and what I think is really interesting to me is here you met Janet Robbins when you were a teenager. Mm -hmm. And here you are years later, which then helps you because, as you know, in anything, it's all who you know that can make you get to the next level. Mm -hmm. Because when you're dealing with somebody like her and she says, oh, I'm going to let somebody hear it. You don't have to do that. She already knows the contacts, you know, that's yeah. got to make your life a whole lot easier. <laughs> it's, she is, she is absolutely incredible. And I will say too, you know, with contacts and I mean, everyone who has all of the artists that have worked on my songs and, and with Enter Sandman are all artists that I'm so grateful to know and honored to work with. And they all come through having worked with Janet before yeah, and she'd sent them my stuff and they all, you know, I'm so grateful said yes and wanted to work on it. But, um, it, you know, Matt, our, our mix master mm -hmm. was working with her band, um, our bass player on all of the tracks, including a woman, isn't it? is it a woman? That yes. Bass? Je um, Jennifer, Joe Oberly. And she is, <laughs> she's so cool. Like she is, so badass and so talented and um just I, I, it's so exciting every time we get her her bass track for each of the songs because she really just she's so good um is, is she and a she, studio is she a studio or she play at the band or what does she do she has played with tons of bands she just was touring with sarah mclaughlin she's Ooh. played with air supply and like various she, yeah all over all the time she's a hard hand working. she's a hard hand yeah hard gun. So excuse me she's a hard gun. <laughs> there you go That's and she call. sings and like she, so so cool and then um the drummer on the enter salmon track is denny fongheiser who has he plays with tracy chapman he just played on the grammys with her um fast car he uh played with heart he's like also he's, like he's kind of good deal. <laughs> he's <laughs> amazing I, I so it's so cool that he played on this song and it's a funny story with him actually because i got first connected with him through janet 
a couple years ago because he was producing and music directing a rock opera um, theater concert piece mm. here in LA. And um, we had just finished production on Haunted and she sent that over to him and he's like, yeah, come in for an audition. And I went and auditioned and met him and um, and I didn't end up getting the the role. I didn't get, I didn't book that show, right. um, but cut to you know, we stayed in touch and then he, and he's been so supportive and with my other singles and, and things that I've released and uh, cut to a couple years later, we're doing Enter Salmon and I'm like, we need a, we need a really badass drummer on this. And I think this is the one where we call Denny finally, because on um, Haunted and My Eulogy, Jana and I did the percussion for that ourselves and didn't have a live drummer. And right. for this one, it was like, we got to have, oh, yeah. we got to have like an incredible live drummer. And, um, and it was so fun. Like it just such a small world and cool how things come around in that way. And, and I loved working with him. Like he, he brought in some really cool things. And I, we told him like, go for it you know yep. we want weird we want like dark and twisty and all the weird percu percussive yeah. sounds and um and also not without losing that like driving bass and the right. like the depth that the original track has is i really love so and yeah he killed it i it's a but all of those people like have collaborated and worked with janet before and um but, so but anyway, let me ask I you feel this. very lucky. Yeah. When I interview a very famous or well-known artist and I ask them, when was the moment you realized that it was weird? And in other words, I interviewed a drummer that used to play with Joe Bonamassa, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, mm. and people of that elk. And I said, when did you realize, like, I'm up here. And he said, when I was sitting there playing, Kenny Wayne was playing Blue on Black, which is his famous song, and I'm playing drums on it. I'm going like, I'm playing drums, you know. My point about it for you is this. You're sitting in the room with some of the great musicians. Now, they may not be on the tip of everybody's tongue. Was there a moment when you go like, man, I don't, don't know if I'm worthy of this. I mean, did you, ha I mean, I, and I don't mean that derogatorily, but I mean, there has to be some doubt that went through your mind. Like, I know I'm good, but am I that good? <laughs> yeah, I, that's, that's a good question. And I think the moment that that has happened is all, it, it comes in when, the yes comes. So like we ask them if they want to play right. and they say yes. And then I'm like, there's like that moment of, are they sure? Do they, was, did they- Will they, they really I, be there? Will are, they be yeah. There? Are, but the thing is that each of these people are so, are such good people, are so kind well, and generous yeah. and warm that that room for doubt is very it's a very small little window that is coming from my own you know my own mind and because it's like getting a gift yes you ask them to come and they say yeah we'll be there and you're like no come on really yeah and and, and of course now you've played with them and all that stuff but i mean there, there there's a thing that happens to like, even even famous musicians there's always this this uh yeah, you know, imposter syndrome that they, a lot of them still have, even when they become really well known. Mm -hmm. And even some of the ones I've talked to, and, and they'll, you can tell in their voice, I, t I shouldn't be up here. It's like, mm. because there's always, th yeah, there's maybe some people, I mean, I could probably jam with Janet and she could do some stuff I can't do, but then she may not be able to do some of the stuff I can do. So, you know, it's not, but I don't think it is a competition. Yeah. yeah it's not a competition. You get all these great minds in a room and you hope that they all come together, whether it's in, doing a part to all come together to make it work. Because that's the other side of it. Sometimes, and it's, it's a lot of times in sports it happens, where they hire the, you know, I'm going to hire the best player from everybody. And then they come together and they can't work together because they, they just, they, there's no jailing there. Mm -hmm. um, 
but to me where you've already had the advantage of working on these people and here's the other thing that's great about you now is you've worked them you set up your own team <laughs> i mean yeah. seriously because <laughs> yeah janet skid you know greased the skids for you obviously <laughs> but now it's now you can go hey would you mind you can pick up the phone and call yeah yeah which is which is also really one of the amazing gifts and generosities of working with janet is the like i said the space that she gives and she likes to, she, for her she is a connector and it's not about her at the end of it it's like yeah. you're making your own relationships anna like i'm gonna connect you because and it's all and it's always a choice if they're available to collaborate sure. and yeah. and wanting to work with me um but no it's so it's being invited into in, in, into this like creative i don't want to call it a circle in a way that's like exclu exclusion well, there's an energy there. anything, but, there's an energy um yeah in the, the energy of it the um yeah. these collaborative relationships and um and i think also with the imposter thing there was a lot of resourcing and that i'm still doing um but that i did before the first time i went into the studio with her as i was writing the songs for the first time like even with that exercise of i'm just going to show up with myself with no pressure or perfectionism like five minutes a day for like two months before haunted came through you know um and oh, and I also I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that with the amazing in group of uh, musicians that played on Enter Sandman, Janet also plays electric guitar on I that. Saw it. And, and mandolin. <laughs> and mandolin. Yeah, we, we wrote a mandolin part that she plays, which is cool. What's your next step? Are you when are you going to start? I want to wrap this up pretty soon, but I mean, when are you yeah. when are you start doing the video? When are you going to start shooting that? Hopefully soon. Um, I mean, it's still early stages of um of of planning and getting it together um with my last video for my eulogy that was a long i mean my director and i um <laughs> would have a call once a week for like months mm. um because there is a lot to that one it, it was a lot um it was a step up in terms of concept and logistics from the video for Haunted, which was our starting point. Um, my amazing director, Chase Harward, and I produced and direct that together, or he mm -hmm. directed those, but we produced them together. And, um, and so with Enter Sandman, there's this unique thing of it being, it's my first cover. Um, it, I, I want to really honor the the piece. So I'm I've been taking my time to be honest with yeah. um with getting the video together, but it is it is happening and will be out sometime this year that is the is the plan. <laughs> and um and I'm also working on more of my own music. Um probably another cover as well is the goal and I'm again just creating a little bit of space for the clarity of what that will be to come through. Um, but yeah, Janet and I, we've been doing a song at a time so far, just with schedules and oh, yeah. each of our own, our own schedules, but um, yeah, more music, the video. Have you got any acting jobs coming up or any Broadway stuff like that? <laughs> I'm auditioning. Um, yeah, not nothing coming up that I know of so far, but have, auditions have been picking up a bit and do people still do summer stock do they still do things yeah like that? okay oh yeah <laughs> absolutely i never i would have never thought that i would cover this song that we would be talking about my take on this metallica song um but i'm super proud of it and somehow it works and it it felt so natural and right and like part of it just fit right into 
I mean, I do. It feel it feels like it, it my my voice and um and so I'm really I'm grateful for for this time and to get to share to share about it and um and just, you know, last one last thing that I just thinking about like to your point about being in the studio and like bringing in the 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 physical state when we're practicing at home and into the studio and um I don't know part of the more that I do this the more that I'm in the studio the more that I'm working with my body and emotions and all of that outside of it the more availability to that flow space and to like the magic and to um to like receiving what wants to come through in the song comes through and like even in the beginning of my our version of enter sandman there's those vocals that come in and mm -hmm. that was totally that was not planned we were just that was in the studio i'm like i want to layer some harmonies and um and it just you know the 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 joy of things revealing themselves in the in the full tapestry of like a song and especially when you can compare it to something else that is so cool um and i i love listening and hearing and remembering and i think you can feel those moments of like oh where like where did this come from or that's unexpected and yeah. and i do i love to i love to um have an element of unexpected and maybe some shock and things like that in my in my music and the, this thing of like keeping people on their toes and it being an interactive and immersive listening experience and um so anyway i'm i'm grateful to to get to share it to, to share it with you and with the world hopefully with metallica hopefully they'll <laughs> Well, that's it for this episode of the Trout Show Podcast. Thank you very much for stopping by and listening. A very, very big special thank you to Anna Mitzer for coming on and talking about her great song, Inner Sandman. And if you need to know and would like to know more about Anna, please visit her website at annamitzer, M-I-T-Z-E-R.com, A-N-N-A-M-I-N-T-Z-E-R.com. Also, once again, shout out to David Smith for continually supporting our show with Edward Jones. And remember, if you want to know more information about everything that goes on The Trout Show, see our videos, listen to other podcasts, visit our website at thetroutshow.com. So until next time, people, remember what I always say. It's only rock and roll. But I love it. See ya. See ya.